So here we go with part three of evolution of the golf swing. Now we went back in the midst of time in part one to understand that golf started in the 14th century with a shepherd, Alex Galloway of the Hay Clan, hitting pebbles with his upturned crook. Well, being resourceful and being part of the Hay Clan, it wasn't long before the young Alex fashioned his crook into a golfing implement called a golfing iron. Now I'm standing next to this brown stake of the white cap. Why is that? Well, it's a 150 yard marker. I'm actually 150 yards from the flag on the 10th green of the, mark of the Duke's course at Woburn. So, in part two of the evolution, we understood that just knocking stones with one hand wasn't good enough. The young shepherd had to apply two hands and that is where the starting point of the grip occurred. The hands became linked with either a baseball grip of ten fingers, an interlocking grip or an overlapping. So, we have to progress. In part two, I was spinning the ball away with two hands and a small swing about a hundred yards. In part one, probably in 60 or 70. But I'm 150 yards away now. So I need more power. My hands can give me a certain amount of power, but I have to introduce help from the body. Okay? If I turn sideways to you, imagine me beating a carpet or hitting a tree with an axe in a horizontal plane. I'm holding the implement, but I'm turning my body back and through. Now posture is required at this point, and we need posture for a number of reasons. The primary reason of good posture is to create power. But linked to that is you can't have a good grip without good posture. If you stand here with your knees bent and slumped, you have to lift your arms up to make a golf swing, and at that moment, the hands are not in a neutral structure. So, when we present the golfing implement, in this case a six iron to the ball, I now tip from the hip to lean forward. You see when I stand up, I showed you earlier that my hands hang against my thighs turned inwards. When I tip from the hip, my arms clear my body, my upper arms come off my rib cage. There's freedom of movement now, but from that attitude, I can bring my hands together with neutral muscle structure. But the beauty is, as I build the grip and tip from the hip, I know how far to lean. I tip forward, and now my body posture is appropriate to hitting a golf ball. If I stand up, this is great for beating a carpet or making a horizontal sort of baseball movement. But if I go from there and lean forward, the horizontal swing becomes the golf swing. So posture is key to a good grip, but posture is the doorway to power. So the question is, at the time in the 1400s or 1300s when young Alex on the beach of Musselburgh with his one golfing iron, he started to adapt it and make the shaft longer and make the shaft shorter and change the loft. And all sorts of wonderful things were done with the club head, in those days made mainly out of wood. And now we have modern clubs made out of forged steel and uh, graphite. But nothing changes much with the human body. Back in the early days of golf, good posture was required to have a good grip, but to create power. So the club itself tells you how far you need to lean. If you offer the club to the ball and tip from the hip to build the grip, the amount you tip to get the grip is the angle of your spine. So this is your normal angle of spine. You tip to a driver, you tip to a six iron, you tip to a wedge. The angle of the spine must adapt to the club that you're using. So the young Alex on the beach at Musselburgh, he's now got his golfing iron. He has his hands linked and he now leans forward from the hips to give his body an angle. He can now coil his body and swish through. Remember the word swish from part one? He's now coils and swishes. Okay, there's the swish, and the ball is right down the flag, landing by the stick. Imagine me against a tree with an axe like this. I'd just be using my hands and arms to use the axe. That's no way to go about it. I have to have a relationship of posture and the implement. Now I can create power and deliver the blow. So slump posture is no good to me. The same is true in golf. Slump posture is hopeless. You've got no rotational ability. From the earliest days of golf, we understood that we had to tip from the hip to create a spinal angle. And now we have the capacity for the body to turn. 
And if the body turns, it creates more power. So my right hand gave me 60 yards. Both hands gave me about 100, 120. Then both hands and some shoulder turn gave me a six arm that flies 150 through the air. And I go back to simplicity. I prepare with a good grip. Two thoughts in my mind. One is to coil and the other is to swish. You can hear a good shot. The sound of the ball content of the club is very distinctive. Prepare, coil and swish the club head.